Hey, Rockin' Readers. This week in reading, we are going to be talking about point of view and the different characters' point of view. This is not the first time you've heard it, but again, we like to review our skills so we keep track and remember what they are. So remember, point of view is how somebody or something thinks or feels about a topic. We've given the example several times about kids um, running in the hallway at school. Teacher's point of view, it's dangerous. You're disrupting others' learning in different classrooms. It's loud. Kids' point of view, I just want to get to the cafeteria as fast as I can because I'm hungry, Miss Peters. Okay? So point of view, again, is how somebody thinks or feels. We are going to start off with a quick little passage to review, and then we're going to do a fun read aloud. So you should have your voices in the park page printed because we're going to use it today and tomorrow. Okay? So we are going to real quick look at the, you don't have this and that's fine. We're just gonna do this together, okay? So we're gonna read it together and talk about point of view and the evidence that we're getting from it. Where's my marker? Okay. Students in grades four and older should not be required to walk in a single file line to get from one location to the next around campus. Students at this age start to show maturity and can handle the responsibility of being more independent. Starting in grade four, teachers should begin training students how to walk around the school's campus in a quiet, calm manner. After a few short weeks of modeling expectations, the teacher should be able to pull back his or her duty and let the students prove they can handle this type of responsibility. So what do you think this author's point of view is about walking around in the hall? Students should be able to do it themselves. That's this person's point of view. And some evidence that we get from that is that it says they start to show maturity. They can handle the responsibility. Um, teachers should begin training students, okay? So we're using our evidence details within the text to figure out what this person's point of view is. It also even kind of says it should not be required to walk in a single file line, but it won't always tell you their point of view. Sometimes you have to use those clues within the text to find the point of view. That's what we're working on, okay? So grab your paper and we are gonna read a book called Voices in the Park. Da, da, da. <laughs> this is a good one by Anthony Brown. And we see two characters here. We also see two little doggies over here. Our characters are not people, they're animals. And sometimes they are animals in text, right? Okay, so we are gonna be filling out this um, chart, part of it together, and you're gonna do some on your own tomorrow, okay? So, here we go. Voices in the park. As you can tell, sorry, on our graphic organizer, we have four voices. That means four different characters. Who is the narrator? Who's doing the storytelling? How is the narrator feeling? Is the narrator enjoying their time in the park? Why or why not? And by looking at the illustrations, I can tell that. So after each character, it's called voice. Who's doing the talking? Their voice. After each one, we're gonna fill this out. We're gonna do two today and two tomorrow. I love this story. Voices in the park. First voice. Okay, here we go. It was time to take Victoria, our pedigree Labrador, which is a type of dog, and Charles, our son, for a walk. Okay, so she is taking her son and the Victoria, the dog, for a walk. When we arrived at the park, I let Victoria off her leash. Immediately, some scruffy mongrel appeared and started bothering her. I shooed it off, but the horrible thing chased her all over the park. So who is our narrator? Who's telling the story? The mom. Do our chart last. 
I ordered it to go away, but it took no notice of me whatsoever. Sit, I said to Charles, here. And who's Charles? Her son. Oh, hmm. I was, oh, I was just planning what we should do, what we should have to eat that evening when I saw Charles had disappeared. Oh dear, where had he gone? You get some frightful types in the park these days. I called his name for what seemed like ages. Doggies in the background. Then I saw him talking to a very rough looking child. Charles, come here at once, I said. And come here, please, Victoria. We walked home in silence. I think Charles was in trouble. I think Charles was in trouble. You're walking home in silence. You're in trouble. So who was our narrator? Did we figure that out from the beginning? We did, it was the mom, right? And how is the narrator feeling? How is she feeling? Remember at the beginning, she was, that new dog came over and she tried to shoo her away. And it wouldn't go away. And then Charles disappeared. And then she saw him talking to the rough looking child. And she Charles, come here. How do you think she's feeling? Annoyed, maybe? Frustrated? I think annoyed for sure. Annoyed that the dog won't leave her alone. Annoyed that she couldn't find Charles. Probably scared there too. Annoyed that he was talking to this other child. And then she says, come here at once. So that you can kind of tell when mom and dad talk like that, they're frustrated or annoyed. So we already pretty much answered that question. Is she enjoying her time at the park? No. No, because we just said, right? Right? Um, the stray dog, Charles, she couldn't find Charles and the other child. No, because of the stray dog. Hmm. I don't have a lot of space to write here. And losing Charles. All right. Now, sometimes we get our details in the text and sometimes we get our details within the illustrations. The next box is asking, by looking at the illustrations, I can tell that, what can you tell? Let's go back and look at the illustrations again. What can you tell about mom? Look at her face. What can you tell about mom's, just by her, her face, by looking at her face? She seems very, to me, she seems very strict, right? And she does not look happy. All right. So looking at those illustrations, give us clues about our character's point of view. Mom looks 
strict and unhappy. All right. Then we're going to read voice number two. Voice number two. And who is it? Can you tell by your graphic organizer? He looks familiar, like we've seen him before. Second voice. He looks grumpy too. What's all these grumpy people going around, huh? I needed to get out of the house. So me and Smudge took the do dog to the park. So who's that? Is that the narrator? I don't know. So there they go to the park. So we don't know which one is Smudge, right? Or who the narrator is. But we know that's the dog. He loves it there. I wish I had half the energy he's got. He's ready to run. Hey, that dog kind of looks familiar. Does that dog look familiar to you? Did we see that dog before in the first voice? Mm-hmm. I settled on a bench and looked through the paper for a job. I know it's a waste of time, but you've got to have some hope, haven't you? So this man, well, Corolla, is looking for a job. Then it was time to go. Smudge cheered me up. She chattered happily to me all the way home. So who is Smudge? We've got him. He's telling our story, right? He's our narrator. I settled on a bench. So that's him. Look in the background here. Oh, there they are. And he said, she chatted, chattered happily to me all the way home. So Smudge must be his daughter. He, she certainly cheered him up. Oh, that's it. That's it for voice two. Okay. That one was faster, huh? So who is the narrator then? The dad, right? And how is he feeling? How do you think dad was feeling here in this story? Remember the first page, it said, I needed to get out of the house. So me and Smudge took the dog to the park. How do you think the dad was feeling? He looked kind of what? We said right at the beginning, kind of grumpy, right? Okay, that's an M. Is the narrator enjoying their time at the park? Why or why not? Was dad enjoying it? Let's go back. He started off grumpy. He says he, he the dog loves it there. I settled on the bench and looked through the paper for a job. I know it's a waste of time, but you've got to have some hope, haven't you? Then it was time to go. So was dad having a good time? No, he was not. He was looking for a job. No, because he needed a job. Okay, and then it says, by looking at the illustrations, I can tell that. So let's go back and look at the pictures again, which we kind of just did, but we'll do it again real quick. Looking at the illustrations, I can tell that. Look at, we said he looks kind of grumpy, kind of sad.
No smiles, none at all. Not until the very last page. You got grumpy eyes. Not until the very last page and then we see a smile there from dad. Because Smudge is cheering him up, okay? <laughs> so by the illustrations, we can tell that dad looks sad. Ah. And grumpy. Okay. So remember we're talking about point of view, how different characters are thinking and feeling. So remember from this point of view, from dad's point of view, we see the energy from the dog ready to go play, right? But from mom's point of view, she is not happy about that, right? So that's different points of view, how different characters think or feel. Tomorrow, we're gonna read voice three and voice four. So keep your paper for tomorrow because tomorrow you're gonna have a discussion post on voice four. Hope you're enjoying the story. I do love this one. We'll work more on point of view tomorrow. <laughs>